I want us all to remember that we stand on sacred ground in this building. Many of you have been looking around at the photos, at the documents. This is where Frederick Douglass lived and worked and wrote and lobbied and served a movement, our government, and was also a journalist. I want to make very clear that there is an intricate relationship between our missions of building a safer, more peaceful, more secure world and the information that we get. Without it, we are not able to do our work. I proudly went to school in Connecticut and I want to claim Senator Murphy all <laughs> I can. I wish you were there. I probably should add that I was a classmate with Joe Lieberman. <laughs> we'll move on from there. <laughs> but what I wanted to remind us is that Frederick Douglass had to speak truth to power, as we heard, that the combination of opening up the truth about slavery, pushing Lincoln to stronger positions when he was not taking them, those are all essential features and writing for the movement through the Black Chronicle. You can see the documents out on the wall, and of course through the North Star. He is our North Star. That would not happen without journalists. I think the same thing is true if we reflect on the awards, Laura, that you're about to get, the Robert Drynan Award. I like to remember Bob Drynan for many, many things, but trying to understand and oppose the secret bombing and extension of the war to Cambodia and Laos and speaking that truth. And we wouldn't have known enough about it if there hadn't been leaks to journalists. The Nixon administration wouldn't be trying to track down who was releasing these stories. And so again, we see that it's journalists who are central to our having a democracy that would function. I would just add that last year, Laura, I want you to know, and I'm very, very pleased that your parents and your daughters are here to share in this moment with you. Last year, we honored Representative John Lewis. One of my board members of Physicians for Social Responsibility sewed up John Lewis's head when he was beaten on the Pettus Bridge. Those outrages and the courage of John Lewis, however, would not have moved the nation if they had not been reported, if those of us who were not at the Pettus Bridge had not been outraged with the kind of coverage that went on from journalists. And so, I hope you will understand, Laura, that you are in part of an incredible tradition that goes back to Frederick Douglass and beyond. And that's why this is an award for peace and human rights. Let me just say a couple of words about Laura Rosen. And parents, you may take pride or grin as you will. She has an incredible modern journalistic career, writes for many different outlets, Al Monitor, Yahoo, Politico, Foreign Policy. She is the definitive source on what is happening in negotiations in Iran. Again, we didn't even know they were going on until Laura began to break stories through back channels, secret channels, that these meetings were going on in Oman, right after Iranian President Rouhani was elected. As a democracy, we didn't even know people were talking, let alone advocate for more talks, for peaceful talks, for understanding. She has covered these things from Almaty, Istanbul, Geneva, Lausanne, and many more. And importantly for the younger, we have many students here from USC and other programs she has a Twitter following of 55,000 followers. Now, for those of you who don't tweet, this is even bigger than Senator Tom Cotton. Yeah. You know, he goes on and on about how we have to have war with Iran, but if you talk about the truth, if you speak truth to power and report it and let the people in on these conversations, you will be followed, you will make a difference. And so, Laura, it is my distinct pleasure to award you with Robert F. Drynan Peace and Human Rights Award for your work as a journalist. So please come up and...